We have four seasons to win the DFB Pokal and the Europa League if we want to complete the Glory Hunter Challenge. Having just won League 1 with Marseille, we need to move on, but none of the jobs available right now are at clubs in Germany or the Europa League. So I'm going to resign from Marseille so I can keep more of an eye on the job market. Ideally, we want a German club in the Europa League, but as summer went on, despite 11 top division jobs being available, none of them met our criteria. But that did change in early July. The Stuttgart job became available. Now, they're only in the Conference League, but they probably aren't good enough to be troubling the top four. So ideally, we move to Stuttgart and have four chances to win the DFB Pokal and three chances to win the Europa League. Eight hours and 53 minutes after applying, I was invited to interview. Their big concern was that I've managed six clubs in 16 seasons, but I told them it's given me a lot of experience that I can use to help the club. They're also keen I work with the director of football, so I lied and told them that I would, and Stuttgart are aiming for a conference league qualification spot, but my aim is the Europa League, so I told them we'd make it there. Now, we could hold on to see if a better club, maybe a Borussia Dortmund, sack their manager after a poor start to the season. But there is no guarantee that's going to happen and we don't really have the time to waste. So although Stuttgart are only giving me £4.4 million to spend, they're our best bet right now. Will Stuttgart be our final club in the Glory Hunter Challenge? I hope so, because I'm definitely coming down with some sort of illness. So just a quick apology for this video because you're not going to get my usual dulcet tones. But I'm still making content for you and I think that is worth subscribing for especially as 70% of you aren't subscribed. We're chasing down 200,000. We need to get there as quick as possible. I would also quite like to end the challenge alongside my new assistant manager, Romelu Lukaku. The team itself is okay. We're set up in a bit more of a defensive style as we're a more mid-table team. Our best player seems to be Andreas Muller on the right wing. But I quickly added to the team with Junior Lopez for three million pounds from Junior FC in Colombia, as well as Lucas Romero on a free transfer. Both will start in our midfield, improving our weakest area of the pitch. But then, disaster struck. RB Leipzig have offered Big Rom a contract, and trying to convince him to stay didn't help. And so Rom is gone. Not only are RB Leipzig the only team in this challenge to reject me from a job, they've now stolen the only thing that brought me light and joy in the world. I will crush them. Our first game of the season was actually in the DFB Pokal first round, and Junior Lopez actually scored a brace in a 7-0 win over a team from the 4th division. Our first Bundesliga game was away at Big Rom's Leipzig, and we came away as unexpected Tuna winners in the grudge match. We also had some impressive draws with our former club Bayer Leverkusen, coming from a goal down to draw one all. Whilst we also came back from a goal down to draw 1-1 with Hertha Berlin in the 76th minute. But we did lose two title holders Borussia Dortmunds away from home at Union Berlin, who won the match in the 89th minute. But overall, we'd had a strong start to the season and sit fifth in the table, one of the two Europa League qualifying spots. But of course, we can also qualify for the Europa League by winning the DFB Pokal. We beat Wolfsburg 1-0 in the second round, and then pulled off a miraculous 2-1 victory over Bayer Leverkusen to reach the quarterfinals of the competition. And we could also qualify for the Europa League by winning the Conference League. After beating Dutch side Vitesse in the qualifying round, we'd won every single one of our league phase matches to only be third in the table behind Arsenal and big scoring Valencia. But the Bundesliga is the pathway we have the most control over. The club's best player, right winger Muller, scored a brace in a 5-0 win over Dynamo Dresden. But somehow our centre defensive midfielder, Junior Lopez, was the club's top scorer, helping us to important wins in the league. But crucially, we weren't good enough to trouble the teams in the top four as we lost to the teams above us in the table, which leaves us in sixth place, exactly where we need to be. Back to the DFB Pokal, and we've been drawn against Vi Bundesliga side Magdeburg in the quarterfinals, who put up a really tough fight, but our attack was just too lethal and our defense too solid meaning we won the tie 2-1 to progress. But in the semi-finals against Dynamo Dresden, we took things up a notch and outplayed our opponents, absolutely destroying them to win the game 4-1 and make it to the cup final. But before that, we have the Conference League to contend with. We breezed past Swiss side Luzerne, winning 4-1 away from home, 
and then 3-0 at our place to comfortably progress to the quarterfinals. Here we came up against Bosnian side Mostar, who were a really good defensive team. Despite having 20 shots in the first leg, only two of them went in the back of the net as we just about won 2-1. But they couldn't do the same at their place, as we were just far too strong, winning 4-0 on the night to make the semi-finals. Turns out we're having an incredible season here at Stuttgart. However, we have Valencia in the semi-finals who have scored 54 goals in 14 games. But we opened up the scoring in Spain 23 minutes in. But obviously, Valencia were always going to add to their 54 goals, as they scored twice before half-time to win the first leg 2-1. They then extended their lead by scoring 7 minutes into the second leg. But 3 minutes later, we equalised on the night, and 39 minutes into the game, we took the lead to level the scores on aggregate. Only for us to lose concentration, and then concede a goal less than 60 seconds later, which turned out to be the final goal of the game. We're out of the Conference League at the semi-final stage. And because of all the games we had in the Cup and Europe, it was starting to affect our league form. Freiburg beat us, Bayern Munich beat us, and Cologne, well, they destroyed us. This means we dropped down into seventh place at the end of the season, one below where we need to be to qualify for the Europa League. However, if we do win the DFB Pokal, we do get a spot in the Europa League. Poetically, we are up against RB Leipzig, who stole Romelu Lukaku offers at the start of the season. But the game didn't start in the way we wanted. After a midfield battle, Leipzig got the ball forward into the penalty area and opened up the scoring on the night. Things got worse 31 minutes in when they doubled their lead scoring from a corner. But a few minutes from half-time, we broke down the far side of the pitch as Muller beat his man, found a cross onto the head of Evan Jude who reduced the deficit at the break. I gave the boys a stern talking to and sent them back out, but it didn't work. RB Leipzig set piece routine bamboozled our defence and we fell two goals behind again. No matter what we tried, we just could not get back into the game and after such a promising start to the season, no DFB Pokal and no Europa League football. It is slightly concerning that our third top scorer ended up being our defensive midfielder, but I think if we can bring in even better attackers, our issues will be solved next season. The board are giving us a nice £69 million to spend on transfers. So I ended up rebuilding a lot of the team. To do that, we sold £60 million worth of players as well, including last season's second top scorer, 32-year-old Evan Jude. But we had to do that to bring in £103 million worth of players to basically do a full-scale rebuild. 19-year-old Borisov Pizarov for £1.9 million from Lokomotiv Plovdiv is by far and away our best transfer and he will leave the line this season. Replacing Evan Jude though is Massimo Semino for £16.5 million from Albacete who were relegated from La Liga last season. This team is way better than last season so I think we can go one step further in the DFB Pokal and I think we can also win the Conference League. I just hope it's not good enough to finish in the top four, which would give us Champions League football and not Europa League football. Up first, once again, is RB Leipzig. And thanks to a late penalty, Red Bull took the win 4-3 on the opening day. But two goals from Borisov Pizarov certainly made the 19-year-old Bulgarian look like he'll be a huge threat this season. Junior Lopez was still scoring goals from a defensive midfield position as we beat Hamburg 2-1 and our new left inside forward Massimo Semino was in and amongst the goals in a 2-1 win over Augsburg. But we still don't have quite enough about us to be consistently beating the top teams as Bayer Leverkusen beat us, which of course is good. We do not want to be in the top four. However, thanks to other teams around us getting bad results, we're actually in second place right now, which is not where we want to be. As it stands right now, we're qualifying for the Champions League via the Bundesliga. What we need to happen is see us drop down into fifth or sixth place, which would get us a Europa League spot for next season. Ideally, we'd also win the Conference League to have an insurance policy too. So I'm going to take a risk here, and it might not be in keeping with the spirit of the challenge, but we're getting pretty desperate. I'm going to force us to play in a default defensive Catanasio formation in the hope we lose games in the league 
but then switch back to what's working well for the Conference League and DFB Pokal to try and make the finals. And of course, there is no possible way for this to backfire. We started losing games, which was exactly what we needed to do. We didn't actually score for eight Bundesliga games in a row, which really makes you think, why is this Casanasio formation even a thing if it's so bad going forwards? But the main thing is, we've dropped down the table to sixth place, exactly where we need to be. So now we're gonna go back to our usual formation to try and hold on to this position. But remember when I said this could have possibly backfire? Well, it turns out all the losing isn't great for team morale or the club atmosphere. So when we did go back to our normal formation for the DFB Pokal, they were too sad to try and win the game, which means we're out of the cup, which of course we desperately need to win. Fortunately, we have done well in the Conference League, winning five of our six league phase games to finish fifth in the table. So despite being out of the cup, we are positioned nicely for the second half of the season to make the Europa League. Or so we thought. Because despite switching back formations, we still lost 3-1 to Frankfurt away from home. And when we traveled to Dortmund, we lost 2-1. Whilst we were difficult to beat, our attackers couldn't find form, meaning we drew a lot of games. And as a result, we dropped down to eighth in the table outside of all the European positions. So now we have three games to get ourselves into fifth or sixth position, but with a six point gap, that looks almost impossible. We did manage to beat Freiburg 1-0 at home to get off to a good start, but all hope was lost when we suffered a 1-0 defeat to Heidenheim and then a 2-0 defeat to Bayern Munich on the final day of the season, which means we finish in eighth place and outside all of the European spots. It might, it might just be my fault. However, we might still be able to reach the Europa League if we win the Conference League. In the round of 16, we were drawn against Rapid Bucharesti and won the first leg in Romania 1-0. A comfortable 2-1 win at home in the second leg saw us safely through to the quarterfinals. Interestingly, we had a much easier time of things against Swiss side Basel, comfortably winning the first leg 3-0 which makes it almost impossible for them to come back in the second leg. Especially when they only score one goal and we score three of our own to win the tie 3-1 on aggregate and make these semi-finals for the second season in a row. But Fiorentina will be tricky as we just about held them to a 0-0 draw in Italy where they admittedly were the better side. But two minutes into the second leg, we opened up the scoring from a nice set piece routine. But 10 minutes later, Fiorentina pulled one back. However, the home crowd got behind us and early in the second half, we scored the crucial goal to win us the game and send us through to the final as 2-1 winners. Luckily, we've been able to avoid Chelsea, who are a better team than us. And instead, we'll be playing Nantes in the final, who we want revenge over. As if you recall, they beat us in the first game of the league phase in the competition. So the season comes down to this game where we have to beat a team that is full of confidence knowing that they beat us earlier on in the season. 15 minutes in and the first chance of the game comes to us. Working the ball down the right wing, Pizarro was open in the middle, but the keeper made a superb save to deny his lead. Five minutes later and we had a chance to build out from the back. Kicking it long, it fell kindly to Pizarro, who held off his man and blasted an effort past the keeper to give us the lead and we almost doubled it 25 minutes in when a powerful header was pushed wide by the keeper. So at half time, we hold on to a slender lead, but with some better finishing, we could have been up by three goals. The second half was much more uneventful. The first highlight coming in the 70th minute as we sent a free kick just over the bar. But from the resulting goal kick, we were able to win the ball in our defensive third and push forwards. Finding a pass into substitute Siraj who lost the ball on the edge of the area, but it was put back into the middle into Pizarov, who scored us a second goal to put the game beyond all doubt. For the second time, we've won the Conference League and secured ourselves a Europa League spot for next season to keep our hopes of completing the Glory Hunter Challenge alive. Thanks to our efforts to lose games in the middle of the season, we didn't actually score that many goals but next season will add some more depth to the team to help us to win the Europa League. We have 35 million to make improvements, 
but the five players we brought in are only there to add depth and strength to the bench. But Antonio Di Gennaro for 7.75 million pounds looks like a steal. If his physicals were better, I think he'd be our starting striker. Moments after coming off the bench for his debut though, he scored in our opening day 5-0 win against Nuremberg. He also scored off the bench in the 89th minute to beat Wolfsburg 1-0 away from home, and then got a brace in a 3-0 victory against Mainz to cement himself as our starting striker this season over Pizarrov, who just couldn't seem to find any four. We won seven and drew three in our first 10, putting us second in the table behind Bayern. This season, I don't want to mess around by trying to engineer a fifth or sixth place finish. We're gonna try and keep morale high all season to win the Europa League. But if we can't do that, and then we finish in the top four, we will be failing. So hopefully we can win the Europa League this season, because if we end up in the top four and make the Champions League next season, that is the challenge failed because we won't have won all the trophies within 20 seasons. Speaking of the Europa League, we beat final 3-1 at home with new boy Antonio Di Gennaro scoring a brace, while centre mid Marek Kisiel got a brace in another 3-1 win against RZ when they came to visit us. We also had an incredible 3-0 win away at Atletico Madrid to cement our title credentials this season. We only dropped two points in a draw away at Porto Manense, which means that we top the league phase table to be made favourites to win the Europa League this season. At the same time, we did suffer a couple of losses in the Bundesliga, which dropped us down to third in the table. But crucially, we won in the first round of the DFB Pokal 2-0 before going on to beat Nuremberg 3-0 in the second round. We just squeezed past Schalke 1-0 in the third round to reach the quarterfinals where we lost last season, but there wouldn't be a repeat this year as we scored twice in extra time to beat Bayern 2-0 over 120 minutes. So as we get to the business end of the season, everything is going really well. We kept up with good results in the league, doing enough to beat the teams below us, but still slipping up from time to time against teams around us in the table. But we do have an issue. We ended the season in third place, which means no matter what, for season 20, we will be in the Champions League. So if we don't win the Europa League this season, we will have failed the challenge. In the round of 16, we traveled to Bulgaria, where our Bulgarian, Borisov Pizarov, scored a brace in a 4-0 win. He then scored a 90-second minute penalty in a 3-1 win in the second leg to see his progress. The quarterfinal matches up with Porto Manense, who we drew with in the league phase. But at home, two goals before the 30th minute gave us the advantage. We then made it 3-0 on aggregate 17 minutes into the game in Portugal, but they did manage to pull a goal back shortly afterwards. Luckily, 30 minutes in, we scored again to win the tie 4-1 on aggregate. But Lazio in the semi-finals would be tough. We did manage to take the lead 80 minutes into the game with a glancing header. Lazio then had a straight red card, which made life a lot easier for us, allowing us to see out the game as 1-0 winners in Rome which was handy as we drew the second leg 0-0 to reach the final. This means we have to take on Valencia, who beat us in the Conference League semi-finals two seasons ago. But we also had the chance to win the double. Remember, we are still in the DFB Pokal, where one goal from Diego Paredes, left open from a corner, was enough for us to clinch victory against Frankfurt in the semi-finals. We have the chance to complete the Glory Hunter Challenge this season. But we need to beat our former club Bayer Leverkusen in the DFB Pokal final to stand a chance of doing it. And we had the dream start to the match. As just over 60 seconds in, Kisiel put through Pizarov, who slotted past the keeper to give us the lead and shock our former club. In fact, there was so much shock, there wasn't another highlight until the 40th minute, where a clearly still rattled Leverkusen kept giving us the ball. But for some reason, Kisiel decided to volley away from the goal, and eventually, Leverkusen got back in possession and started to build out. They worked the ball down the near side of the pitch and delivered a cross. Our keeper came out for it, missed the ball, and Leverkusen equalised. Half time, and we're drawing 1 1. But we had been the better side, and I wanted us to score early on. But momentum was now swinging in Leverkusen's direction and they had the first chance of the half 
but we just managed to get rid of it. Moments later, we won the ball in defence and tried to build through the middle of the pitch. The ball fell to the feet of Kisiel, who ran from the edge of a centre circle to the penalty area, took a shot and gave us the all-important lead. But disaster struck 59 minutes in, when a foul committed by one of our players was judged to have been in the area and Leverkusen were given a penalty. But our keeper held strong, guessed correctly and made a crucial save to keep us in the lead. Once again, this meant momentum was swinging back in our favour. Pizarov received the ball and brought three defenders onto him, giving space for Semino to make a run. Pizarro then found him, and Semino found the back of a net, giving us back the two-goal cushion. But the referee seemed hell-bent on Leverkusen winning, awarding them a really dubious penalty in the 74th minute, and this time, they managed to score it, making the game tight once again. Bodies were on the line, tackles came flying in, and Leverkusen just missed the target. But we held strong defensively, kept them at bay, and eventually, we won the match and lifted the DFB Pokal Trophy above our heads to win our penultimate trophy of the Glory Hunter Challenge. 19 seasons, 12 trophies and just one to go. So now it all comes down to this. Beat Valencia and we complete the Glory Hunter Challenge. Lose and we fail. Straight from kickoff, we could build possession as we pass the ball around the back slowly working it forwards through the midfield before the ball was put through to Pizarov, who had his effort tipped over the bar. 10 minutes in and we were trying to fashion another chance down the far side of the pitch. Some neat passing allowed Dragon to put a low cross in behind the defence for Massimo Semino to put us in front. But Valencia weren't going to lie down. Less than five minutes later, they tried their luck down the near side and despite our best efforts to dispossess them, the ball kept falling to Valencia, who shot from distance, but our keeper is in form. Semino is given a chance to break down the near side, using some clever footwork to get around his defender, but in the end, Valencia were able to clear the ball. But we sent it right back the other way. Pizarov laid the ball off, and we scored a low shot from distance to double our lead. But again, Valencia were quick to respond, immediately pushing forwards from kickoff and putting a low cross into the penalty area that we only just dealt with. But we just kept having better chances with our quick passing and movement, this time Pizarro putting his shot just over the crossbar. But Valencia kept coming too and worked a neat corner routine into the area and pulled one back. But hope for Valencia was shattered when just before half-time, their main striker saw red, two-footed our player, and then saw red from the referee. Half-time and we have a one-goal advantage and a one-man advantage, which we made very good use of. Having extra bodies on the edge of the area for a free kick, our shot just hit the crossbar. And then we hit the crossbar again, this time from a direct free kick. We need to score to assert our dominance and relieve some of the pressure. So luckily, we have the cool head of left inside forward Semino to deliver exactly what we needed. Back with a two goal lead, we were cruising through the game and came agonizingly close to scoring a fourth. But instead, we hit the woodwork for the third time in the game. Pizarro tried his luck again with a decent shot, but once again, he could not find the back of the net. But by this point, Valencia were tired and running out of motivation. We sent the ball straight back up the other end of the pitch, and this time Muller finished past the keeper to score as our fourth goal of the game and win us the Europa League trophy, the final piece of the jigsaw, as we complete the Glory Hunter Challenge, winning all 13 trophies in 19 seasons. And it's not a bad list of clubs to have been the manager of and win these trophies with either. So if you enjoyed this series, make sure you subscribe to the channel for plenty more stories in the future. But in the meantime, YouTube is recommending this video for you on screen. So let's test out how good YouTube algorithm is. Go give it a watch and see if you enjoy it. And if you do, leave a comment letting me know. See you in the next video.